Dr. Usama. I have been uh, taking your lectures on biomedical sciences. I hope you all doing all right. So uh, today's topic is on hypertension, which is also called high blood pressure. It is a very common issue these days, a uh, very common comorbidity, we say, uh, and uh, a lot of population stays unscreened or unrecognized for this issue unless they develop complications and it shows up. So we are going to talk about it in very uh, uh, good detail. So let's talk about it further. So what is a blood pressure? Blood pressure is basically the pressure of uh, blood pushing against the walls of our arteries, our veins, or blood vessels. So arteries carry blood from our heart to other parts of the body. So basically heart acts like a pump uh, and uh, the all the blood vessels attached to it like uh, well a tube system or like a tube well like so when the heart pushes at once and it sends blood throughout the body so uh, basically heart has four chambers you are already aware of that uh, one side chamber basically deals with the lungs uh, it sends blood to the lungs to get filtered and to get more oxygen and uh, the blood from uh, the lungs return to the same chamber and then it goes to the left side of the heart which then pumps the oxygenated blood to the whole body and then uh, uh, blood circulates throughout and it, uh, in another way it returns to the other chamber of the heart. So basically it's a closed circuit in which a uh, heart pumps again and again and this cycle goes on. So blood pressure is basically uh, the amount of pressure that blood exerts on the walls of the vessels when hearts, heart pumps the blood through it. So uh, your blood, normal blood pressure rises and falls throughout the day. Uh, it depends on our daily activity. Uh, like if you are like uh, too much active or, or do cardio daily or you do exercise or running or you have like a, a, a job like that, that you have you, you do uh, heavy work throughout the day. So your blood pressure may uh, stay a, bit, a little bit up than those persons who stay uh, sedentary or inactive throughout the day or they uh, spend their day all by sitting or sleeping. So it varies throughout the day depending on our activity and the need of the blood throughout the body. So what do you, uh, what do the blood pressure numbers mean? We usually uh, see this 120 by 80, like in the hospitals you may have seen in the textbooks you have read that this, uh, what does this number signifies? So uh, this 120 is called systolic blood, while uh, the 80 uh, below the bar denominator, it signifies or uh, it, uh, it implies towards the diastolic blood pressure. So uh, first of all, let me uh, tell you about the systolic and diastolic pressure. So systolic blood pressure is uh, when the uh, pressure exerted, uh, when the heart uh, pumps and uh, it pushes the blood throughout uh, the vessels of the body. So this is called the diastolic. Sorry, this is called the systolic blood pressure. And when the uh, uh, when the blood returns to heart through uh, by after circulating throughout the body, uh, it returns through the veins to the heart. It is uh, when uh, that pressure is called diastolic. So blood pressure exerted when blood is injected into the arteries. Normal systolic blood pressure is one twenty mmHg millimeter hydrogyrum or below. So this is the standard unit of the blood pressure we measure. Diastolic blood pressure means uh, the pressure exerts within the arteries between heart beats. Uh, normal diastolic blood pressure is 80 or below. So basically diastolic blood pressure is the returning of the uh, uh, blood when it returns to the heart. That pressure is called diastolic. Meanwhile, the uh, it goes away from the heart uh, from when heart uh, pumps against uh, the resistance of the vessels. So this pressure is high a bit and when it, uh, it, uh, it runs the heart pressure drops to 80. So when we say uh, we write a number like this to signify the blood pressure, it signifies that this is the uh, pressure by which heart is exerting or pushing blood into the arteries. And this is the pressure by means uh, the blood is returning toward the heart 
of the circulation throughout the body. Okay. So the first number is called systolic blood pressure, measures the pressure in your arteries when heart beats. The second number is called diastolic blood pressure. The, it measures the pressure in your arteries when your heart rests between the beats. So uh, heart heart circulates like in one beat, like it uh, it squeezes uh, the blood in it, and it, uh, by squeezing it, it's uh, you know it pushes the blood to the towards the arteries that carry blood away from the heart. Meanwhile, the veins which carry blood toward the heart. So when uh, a heart when the heart beats or when uh, like uh, heart goes and then the contraction it pushes or squeezes the blood in it and this way it exerts pressure to push the blood into the arteries toward the through, uh, towards the body or our limbs or our brain so uh, when uh, when it contracts it is called diastolic phase of the heart but when it relaxes momentarily between the uh, two beats or two contractions it is called the diastolic phase of the uh, uh, blood pressure. So, resting phase of the heart is called diastolic, in, in which like blood returns towards it through the veins. So, basically, uh, let me uh, tell you how it works. So. Uh, Where is my mouse? So let's suppose this one is heart, and this way blood goes to the limbs, and in between there are small blood vessels that are called arteries that supply blood directly to the body cells and after supply of the nutrients and oxygen and this way it returns back to the heart so this pathway uh, that goes from let, uh, let let's get with a shape so this is a proper little heart that uh, we will use as emoji so this one is heart and this way uh, suppose this is just a you know a, a demonstration of how it works so this one, uh, the, the blood vessel that carries blood away from the heart is called artery. So heart, when squeezes, it pushes the blood through the artery to the uh, different organs of the body. And in each organ or each limb, we have these small uh, blood vessels that are called capillaries. Uh, uh, these capillaries have direct contact with the body cells uh, through which they exchange oxygen, carbon dioxide, uh, uh, they dispose carbon dioxide and get oxygen and the nutrients from the blood. And when blood gets its job done, it returns towards the heart again. So when uh, this pathway from uh, heart to the capillaries or the organs, uh, the blood pressure is 180, 120, sorry. It is 120. Meanwhile, when it returns towards the heart, the blood pressure is 80. So it is understandable that how the blood pressure drops because uh, when it flows through this, it, it carries the uh, squeezing uh, like action of the heart and this way it gets slower, 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 slower. In capillaries, blood gets too, too much slow because uh, a very slow speed is required for the exchange of the nutrients and gases. Uh, then speed starts going up again and it goes up to 80 when it returns to heart. And uh, because there is no pump between the arteries and the uh, uh, veins, to uh, to, uh, to reach the heart again so that these uh, this action of squeezing and contraction is taken up by the muscles of the body whenever we move our skeletal muscles contract so does the arteries or the blood vessels in them also squeezes so this way the uh, veins carry the contraction or the squeezing effect from that and returns heart uh, returns the blood toward the heart so if the measurement leads uh, If the measurement reads 120 systolic and 80 diastolic, it means 120 over 80. This is how we read the blood pressure. A normal, a normal blood pressure level is less than 120 by 80. So uh, basically, it's a range like uh, 120 or 115 or 110 to 125. Uh, it's okay to have this blood pressure systolic. Meanwhile, uh, 65 to 90, it's okay if we speak of diastolic blood pressure. So uh, it's not a, like uh, a fixed number. It, 
it might change or may vary from person to person. So uh, this is our major topic today. What is high blood pressure? High blood pressure mean uh, it is also called blood uh, hypertension. It means uh, the systolic blood pressure as well as diastolic blood pressure. It goes up more than 30 by more than 80. So it means high blood pressure is when force of blood pushing against your artery wall is consistently too high than it should be. So this damages your arteries over time and can lead to serious complications like heart attack and stroke. So uh, our body uh, arteries and the veins are like uh, are very uh, little tiny sort of elastic tubes that inflate like uh, like they slightly expand when the blood pressure uh, when the systolic blood uh, passes through them and then comes to original shape but when uh, the uh, when there is high blood pressure sustains for a very long time what happens exactly they uh, remain stretched for long and their uh, wearing and uh, wearing and tearing starts in them so uh, it they gets damaged and they lose their elasticity somehow uh, uh, this is in young people uh, or like people uh, 30 in 30s 40s or below this is uh, not normal to have high blood pressure because if you are uh, adequate if you are you know uh, you stay adequately active you take healthy food and uh, your blood pressure uh, remains in the normal range your blood vessels remain perfectly fine but if you are like uh, uh, are a smoker or you uh, have a uh, you know, you are overweight or you are too sedentary, there is a high risk that you might develop high blood pressure as well, high cholesterol levels that might lead to deposition of cholesterol in this, uh, uh, in the inner side of the vessel. This way, these vessels in one way gets uh, further thinner, their bore gets further thin, uh, plus there is hardening of the walls, so they not expand as much as they should. So this is the major uh, like chronic or a late complication of the hypertension if it gets untreated. Uh, when it comes to aging, uh, there is a process called atherosclerosis starts in which like uh, uh, the, these walls of the arteries or blood vessels starts to harden or be less elastic, less elastic uh, because of the wear and tear and the changes in the structure of the arteries, uh, these arteries. So basically, they contain muscular cells as well as collagen protein. As we age, these uh, production of the collagen decreases. So this way, the elasticity of the blood vessels always also decrease. Uh, hence, the older population are more prone to have like hypertension, stroke, or have like uh, any other disease related to cardiovascular system. So uh, hypertension is another word for the common condition. So uh, what uh, when we start calling it hypertension so uh, systolic is okay when it reaches like 120 to 129 max when it touches the 130 threshold when uh, when uh, this way we call it like uh, that person is become hypertensive so the threshold uh, uh, to label a person as hypertensive is 130 for systolic and 80 for diastolic uh, sometimes some uh, books write it 92 that uh, above 90 is uh, hypertensive, but some write as 80 plus is, uh, you know, uh, the, that person is going hypertensive. So this was uh, was about hypertensive. What is hypertension? So uh, there are different definitions uh, like on the basis of the healthcare departments of various countries. So in the US healthcare providers, we find high blood pressure as a top number systolic blood pressure of at least 130 and or higher. And the bottom number, which is called diastolic blood pressure of at least 80. So uh, these two uh, digits are the uh, thresholds that are written in the American literature that says this is the minimum uh, blood pressure above which hypertension starts. So uh, uh, these are different uh, like stages of the hypertension uh, given. Uh, if we, um, as I said, that 120 by 80 is the ideal blood pressure, but if we say like 120 to 129 systolic, as well as uh, the diastolic touches 80, we can say this is slightly elevated blood pressure, but this is okay, uh, and this is we uh, a normal patient it can happen uh, like during exercise 
during any strenuous work, uh, a lot of like daily activities can raise to this much blood pressure, but this is totally normal that uh, if, if it goes like 129 and then it uh, goes down again to the normal level. So it is uh, just elevated blood pressure. It is not hypertension. It is totally normal. Anyone can have it. So there is stage one hypertension. There is two, two hypertension. So basically these are like uh, categorized on the basis of the prognosis and the treatment. Basically stage one hypertension is uh, kind of too early uh, and it is easily treatable and it has less complications if treated early. So uh, when we call it stage one hypertension, when the systolic blood pressure is 130 to 139, this uh, in this range, we call it stage one hypertension while the diastolic stays 80 to 89. In stage two, the hypertension diastolic uh, is 90 plus. Let's say uh, it's usually in stage two hypertension patients. I have seen that that diastolic blood pressure stays uh, like it touches hundred or above, or in that stage two hypertension, the systolic blood stays one forty plus. In some people, like uh, the, uh, those people who are very obese, uh, or very they are uh, and obese plus the, if they are too sedentary, their systolic blood pressure and uh, this value reaches to two hundred. I mean, while the diastolic reaches 200, 120, 130. So this blood pressure can go this much higher. So uh, it can potentially lead to stroke, uh, either ischemic or hemorrhagic stroke. So there are different types. Uh, there are different manifestations by the high blood pressure can show itself. So it is a major risk to, uh, so uh, anyone having blood pressure, high blood pressure sustained for a long time can have these complications. So how common is high blood pressure or hypertension? So these are some stats I have collected from the recent studies. High blood pressure is very common. It affects 47% of the adults in the US. This equals about 116 million people. Of those 37 million have blood pressure of at least 140 by 90. It is a very uh, significant number. And I think almost half uh, population is suffering from hypertension. So there is one uh, thing other because if, even if the hypertension gets diagnosed, a significant number of people doesn't get it treated and they just take it lightly that it, it's okay, we are not having any symptoms and suddenly or uh, uh, all of a sudden they have a stroke, they have heart attack, uh, like they have any uh, other symptoms uh, of any hemorrhage in the brain. So it can manifest as uh, uh, any time if it is not being controlled or uh, not being treated on a regular basis. So high blood pressure caused or contributed to over 66 uh, lakh 70 thousand deaths in the US in 2020. So it is also a significant number that uh, this much uh, this uh, a big a chunk of population uh, gets like uh, diagnosed and uh, have died due to this deadly disease. It is like uh, this. Uh, I would say this is a more a condition than a disease itself because the air this progresses. It is not itself a disease, but it uh, it manifests. It can manifest other diseases, or it can lead to another disease as well. So because this is a condition, it can be easily treated uh, if uh, it is in early stages or uh, if even in later stage. If you are taking medicines to control hypertension and your blood pressure remains adequately controlled then you are uh, good to go. It means you are not at risk as much as the other people, those who are, have uh, dangerously high blood pressures and they're not taking any medications for it. So the World, uh, World Health Organization, WHO estimates that globally over 1.2 billion people aged between 30 to 79 have hypertension. So they are their stats that uh, uh, globally, this number, this big number of people have hypertension who are just aged uh, between 30 to 79. If we speak of a population under 50, we still consider them as young population or young adults. Uh, we do not categorize them under the population of geriatrics, which starts after like 55 or 60, 70, 80. So uh, geriatric population are kindly a different population to uh, treat, uh, just like we treat the uh, children in the pediatrics. So uh, it is it shouldn't be common to have hypertension uh, below uh, 40 or 30. Um, it, is, it shouldn't be like uh, this way. It, it, ha it doesn't have to be. 
because uh, um, it is such a uh, uh, it is getting so much common these days that uh, like people are being so careless about it this is uh, people have to uh, like do something for uh, for it if they get diagnosed for it uh, but beyond that uh, if you are taking uh, already good care of your health you are uh, you are not overweight you exercise daily or have cardio daily or you are uh, adequately active uh, in your daily routine so you are uh, kind of uh, already protecting yourself from this kind of diseases like uh, hypertension and the diabetes as well uh, there is one factor that diabetes and hypertension is uh, uh, have some have uh, some uh, sort of a familial predisposition but it is not as much as cases are diagnosed so this way we uh, it means that this uh, disease is more acquired than have uh, than uh, getting genetically inherited so uh, it is it can be controlled so this graph shows the percentage of population affected by the hypertension versus the age so if we speak of uh, age between 20 to 34 about 8.6% men were diagnosed with the uh, hypertension meanwhile less women like 62% was uh, 6.2% was diagnosed with hypertension as we move with the age you can see uh, there is a significant rise in each population each decade or half decade i would say uh, Uh, sorry it's almost more than a decade actually so uh, uh if we go up like one decade it adds up to 10% or more than 10% of population that are having hypertension so uh, at 50 or between 50 to 60 uh, the number uh, is higher for men than the women then then uh, over 55 it gets equal and that then a uh, woman starts having blood high blood pressure it means that if we speak of uh, like uh, population under 50 then in that population uh, more men would be having hypertension than the women but if we speak of the population between 50 to 70 or 70 plus then there would be a high chance that women would be having more hypertension so this uh, this is uh, this section is all uh, kind of uh, favorite for me because uh, Uh, i am a public health sci- uh, uh, scientist and all, always believe in uh, the stats of the disease the uh, disease burden so we can tackle it accordingly so this is uh, how you see the distribution or the uh, uh, you can say the, the burden of the disease gender wise uh, versus age wise so what are the signs and symptoms of high blood pressure taking off signs and symptoms symptoms mean the patient that uh, patients uh, like can observe themselves only and the signs are those that doctor can observe so symptoms are frequently in uh, asymptomatic uh, basically asymptomatic blood pressure because, uh, because it state uh, person stays uh, totally normal unless they are having mild headache or something like that so symptoms might be headache might be visual changes if Uh, there is a uh, dangerously high blood pressure then you might have chest pain you might have dyspnea means trouble breathing uh, or you might have no symptoms at all in early stages and what would be the signs that doctor can see is uh, doctor can see hypertensive retinopathy means your retina which is a part of eye gets damaged due to the high blood pressure so this is this way we call it hypertensive retinopathy there is cardiomegaly arrhythmias as well cardiomegaly means the heart increases in size this is because heart have to pump more like with the more power so uh, it its muscle grows larger arrhythmias means heart contracts irregularly so this is one of the uh, sign of the high blood pressure if it means uncontrolled protein urea means your kidneys are being damaged and you are uh, suffering you are seeing blood in your urine so these are signs and symptoms of high blood pressure so usually high blood pressure causes no sign and symptoms uh, that's why health care providers call it silent killer as well so you could have high blood pressure for years and not know it in fact who estimates that 46 of the adults with hypertension don't know when uh, they have it so it usually stays like asymptomatic unless you one day you suffer from a severe headache you 
when they use severe form severe palpitation you uh, suffer from uh, any sort of trouble breathing so uh, when you go to doctor and doctor checks and ask you uh, when did you diagnose this issue and you are completely clueless when this uh, start started in the first place so it is uh, also called silent killer that it stays is symptomatic unless it can manifest itself as either slight uh, sign and symptom or either it can manifest itself as a heart attack or a stroke so hypertensive crisis hypertensive crisis this word is used for a kind of uh, uh emergency related to high blood pressure which means uh, you suddenly have high blood pressure uh, uh 120 uh, by 1 uh, 120 oh, sorry 180 by 120 which is significantly higher a normal blood pressure is the reading is 120 by 80 so this is a hell of a difference that 180 uh, is systolic in hypertensive crisis meanwhile the normal value is 120 and in diastolic pressure in hypertensive crisis is 120 Uh, meanwhile its normal value is 80 so there is a very big gap in the normal values and the values in a disease uh, with a condition which we call hypertensive crisis so hypertensive crisis symptoms may include it is uh, let me tell you that it is a, a complete emergency you should like uh, report to the hospital immediately because if you uh, uh, if you be late or if you you know uh, you just ignore it or you try to treat it at home it would uh, like it wouldn't be solved that much easily because uh, this much high blood pressure can definitely lead to blindness you are uh, complete shutdown of the kidneys uh, or heart attack or brain hemorrhage so these would be the signs and symptoms you would you should immediately report to the hospital you must be, might be suffering, uh, suffering from the hypertensive crisis so number one is shortness of breath number 2 is headache and if we speak if i speak of the headache it means the worst headache of your life you might be uh, you must understand or must uh, uh, like remember this phrase whenever you have shortness of breath accompanied by the very severe headache like uh, when you uh, even you never had it in your life even if you have it, like on day, uh, like if you have even if you have my pain then this hypertensive crisis can lead to a headache which would be worse than migraine it, it, it's called worst headache of your life like it's all is like throbbing pain that patients just uh, grab their head and like uh, be crying or like too numb to say anything that this headache is too much strong you might have chest pain to bear that you might have a blurry vision because your eyes are going to shut down you might be having heart palpitation your heart is beating too uh, quickly you might be start having anxiety you might faint you might get nose bleed you might get vomiting so these are the ways that can uh, the very high blood pressure or dangerously high blood pressure can manifest itself so you can have one or two of these symptoms if any of god forbid can uh, uh, god forbid have uh, suffered this so uh, if these symptoms can manifest itself either one or two of them or either all of them at once so what are the types of blood pressure basically there are two types uh, the, this one primary hypertension and the secondary hypertension uh, primary hypertension is more common type of high blood pressure mostly 90% of the adult cases have it so it in its uh, causes include the aging which is the number one cause and the other lifestyle factors like getting no, uh, not enough exercise not enough cardio or being too much alcoholic or being too much on the junk food or having oily foods as well because this predisposes uh, disposes high cholesterol levels in the circulation uh, which leads to the narrowing of arteries and uh, uh, you can have a stroke due to that so secondary hypertension is uh, like of high type of high blood pressure that include different medical condition or medicines you are taking so uh, primary hypertension is the actual hypertension that you have due to either reason Uh, and you have uh, like to live with it too so, secondary hypertension is uh, something like if there is an other disease going on in your body if you are taking any certain medicine so uh, those disease or those medicine can cause this hypertension this is not permanent you can get rid of it easily which is called secondary hypertension uh, one interesting example i would say is secondary hypertension is in, uh, in pregnancy some females uh, start uh, uh, experiencing 
hypertension that we call preeclampsia or eclampsia that uh, gets to uh, like a serious complication but this that is called secondary hypertension because if that female is not having hypertension in uh, before the pregnancy or in her early age of life but during the pregnancy she develops secondary hypertension uh, and after pregnancy usually it resolves so that would be hypertension secondary hypertension it uh, it can be uh, like due to any cause like due to any other disease which is not like uh, any other disease like of heart cell uh, any medicine that is causing uh, to uh, blood pressure go up like in some people who are suffering from asthma they have uh, like inhalers that contain medicines that can you know uh, uh, they can raise your heartbeat so uh, this way that those patients can also suffer from secondary hypertension so these were the two types of blood pressure so high blood pressure that can go comes and goes in certain situations so uh, white coat hypertension mask hypertension sustained hypertension nocturnal hypertension so these are various patterns that uh, can like uh, in which uh, blood pressure can go up and down in some of them are totally normal so your bp is normal at home but elevated in a healthcare setting uh, this is more like a, a stress response if i would say that some doctors working in emergency uh, like say, uh, with a too much patient load or say, having uh, to deal with a serious case might have this due to stress this is totally normal and because in the stress uh, situation our body is releasing adrenaline uh, naturally this way our blood pressure can go up so it is called white coat hypertension uh, it means you can have in a healthcare setting uh, even if as a patient if you go to hospital Uh, you might have a slight anxiety this way can also be uh, like your blood pressure can get a little bit up than normal so mask hypertension it means uh, <clears throat> your bp is normal in healthcare setting but elevated at home so mask hypertension mean uh, like in some situations if you are patient you get your bp well controlled if you are admitted to hospital you are on medications whenever you and you go home you med- you are off the meds of that whatever the condition might be admitted be so uh, and your blood pressure starts rising in at home so that would be a masked hypertension because uh, uh, you were staying in hospital you were getting meds and you were not like uh, aware that you were having hypertension but certain medication in the hospital uh, somehow managed to get it down but when you go home uh, that blood pressure starts elevating again so this would be called my masked hypertension these not are like uh hard and fast rule or any terms these are general patterns that some people can observe sustained hypertension uh, it means your bp is elevated in healthcare setting and at home it mean, this sentence signifies that you are having a permanent hypertension which is a disease this is a usual manifestation of manifestation of the disease and uh, this one is also masked one masked and sustained both are the uh, two different manifestations that we can uh, like any uh, patient that is suffering from hypertension can uh, suffer but the white coat hypertension is totally normal because uh, it is usually due to stress so uh, coming to the next nocturnal hypertension you bp your bp goes up when you sleep so uh, this term uh, refers to a number of different issues like uh, in patients uh, in a patient of chronic heart failure Uh, whose uh, like uh, diastolic function is compromised uh, in which like heart cannot be relaxed normally which uh, it would be so whenever you lie your blood pressure like goes a little bit up because when uh, whenever you are standing your blood pressure is circulating throughout your lower limbs and the arms and your heart is not like facing that much load but whenever you lay down your eyes uh, you are sorry your legs uh, like lie at the same level at your trunk so this way uh, more more and more blood starts flowing to the heart but you are, uh, if the patient's heart is heart's diastolic function is like uh, is compromised heart is not able to relax properly then you can, you might have like uh, hypertension but at night now channel means usually patients uh, patients like uh, suffer this whenever they uh, like lie uh, in bed in the night and uh, all of a sudden they having start having like a, a shortness of breath or some like palpitation 
so uh, this is the um, any, another manifestation of the blood pressure high blood pressure and it is usually this this one is usually seen in the chronic heart failure patients in which heart heart function is compromised so what are the causes of primary hypertension uh, as i said that unhealthy eating patterns uh, including high uh, sodium in diet high salt in diet lack of physical activity high consumption of beverages containing alcohol so these are the major causes of primary hypertension and you can see uh, all of these can go away if you just be a little bit more aware or more conscious of your health you do not if you do not take like too much sodium in your diet if you do not take too much fats in your diet and you are eating healthy you are eating uh, like fresh vegetables you are eating salads you are eating uh, like not too much fried food too much uh, like oily food uh, this way you can fix your eating pattern and lack of physical activity mean you should you at least at least uh, uh, go to a walk uh, daily uh, like uh, for even 10 minutes or 15 or 30 minutes or go for a run or anything that like uh, a little bit like that uh, Uh, that pushes your heart to uh, heart to beat a little bit higher like which mean uh, in a simple word that we you call cardio it means uh, you do a little a uh, run or any jogging or that uh, that pumps blood throughout your body and you get a little warm up so that would be enough for you to uh, stay away from this disease you shouldn't be uh, consume too much alcohol because this uh, this is also a leading cause of hypertension as well because uh, it can damage your body in different ways uh, we don't have to go to this much detail about the alcohol or anything but usually you just have to remember that do not eat too much salt in the diet do not take too much fat or fried food in your diet you should go for a run or a walk at least daily and you shouldn't be consuming too much alcohol and i forgot right you sh- uh, smoking is one of the biggest causes of the atherosclerosis which means hardening of the blood vessels that can also cause primary hypertension so what are the causes of secondary hypertension uh, as i already said that secondary hypertension is due to another cause another disease another condition going on in our body or due to any other uh, medicine as well so certain medicines including immunosuppressant and sedatives which we call as painkillers oral contraceptives so these medicines can cause hypertension uh kidney disease can also cause hypertension cause hypertension obstructive sleep apnea can also cause hypertension so this one is another disease so primary aldosteronism which is also called cohn syndrome these are a bit a uh, little bit of dif- difficult names you just have to remember it by that this disease is a sort of a hormonal disorder or uh, sorry i would say a, a, a disorder in which your body is producing excess uh, Uh, aldosterone another hormone uh, like similar to testosterone or adrenaline that can cause blood pressure to go up recreational drugs such as uh, amphetamines or cocaine these drugs can also like uh, boost your heart rate and can cause hypertension renal vascular diseases which are conditions that affect blood flow into your kidneys arteries and veins this can cause can do hypertension renal artery stenosis is a common example so in this way uh, these are different situations that can cause hypertension and that would be secondary hypertension because it is not of any natural cause it is not due to your inactivity it is not due to your smoking uh, sorry uh, it is not due to your alcohol uh, and it is not due to uh, your food intake or anything like that uh, tobacco use including smoking vaping and using smokeless tobacco the uh, this is kind of a common uh, for the primary and secondary hypertension because smoking cause just like alcohol causes different uh, things to go wrong in our body so uh, this is also a cause of primary as well as secondary hypertension so uh, let's categorize the secondary hypertension causes into this uh, algorithm i would say there is a renal cause for it there is endocrine cause for it there is cardiovascular cause for it so speaking of the renal causes renal vascular hypertension it is another condition renal parenchymal hypertension so these are diseases related to uh, kidneys that can cause secondary hypertension and then there comes endocrine uh, causes which means there is uh, imbalance of the hormones 
that are causing blood pressure to go up, which are primary hyperaldosteronism, uh, Cushing disease syndrome, pheochromocytoma, it is a tumor that releases excess adrenaline, hyperandrosism, hypothyroidism. So these are different endocrine disorders. You don't have to remember their name, but you just have to remember that there are renal causes, there are endocrine causes, there as well as their cardiovascular causes that can lead to secondary hypertension. Uh, in cost cardiovascular, we can uh, see ob obstructive sleep apnea, coarctation of aorta. Uh, coarctation of aorta means there would be narrowing of aorta or the main blood vessel that leads blood to the body, uh, which can cause blood pressure to go up. So all of these topics, just like the diabetes before, or uh, uh, as I already uh, taught you before, many other disorders like this, such as like vitamin uh, vitamins, uh, the white. Uh, vitamins, skin diseases, uh, sexually transmitted diseases, uh, the diabetes, so and now the hypertension. The purpose of this these topics to make to uh, make you well educated related to these very common health issues uh, in our society. Even we, if if we don't don't have to treat someone uh, from this knowledge, but at least we should be aware of that. What is going wrong with our body or with your uh, with the body of someone you love, some of your friend, your family, or anyone. So this is a very, very basic thing. Like these topics or these, uh, this knowledge is very basic. Anyone should have like to uh, to aware to be aware of something. Like uh, uh, this much healthcare education should be given to anyone. You uh, all of you are university students, so you must be aware of these. What is hypertension? What are its causes? Uh, uh, which are the things or factors that can cause it? Uh, what is what is primary hypertension? Means a simple hypertension that can be due to uh, inactivity or your food or your uh, in healthy unhealthy lifestyle, and the second to hypertension that can due be due to these causes. So you must know this, uh, even if you don't have to treat the patient, but at least you should be educated or should you should know this that these conditions can happen to anyone. So you should be aware of that and when and how to reach which charity uh, or when to go for, uh, when to ask for help when there is emergency. So uh, this is, uh, all of this is to make you well acquainted with any situation. So risk factors for high blood pressure are uh, having biological family members with high blood pressure, cardiovascular disease or diabetes, uh, I already said in the starting of the lecture, there is acquired, uh, there are required risk factors as well as there are predisposed, predisposition of like in family. Being over 55 can uh, be a, a very big risk for the CVS uh, diseases, cardiovascular disease, I already told you, because uh, as you age, they start wear and tear in your body. Your body starts to produce less collagen which leads to the hardening or uh, of the arteries means the arteries or blood vessels gets less elastic and this way the blood pressure can go up uh, due to decreased collagen you also have wrinkles and other skin issues so uh, this is uh, like con of the aging that you uh, become susceptible, susceptible to a lot of diseases to a lot of like even you you might have diabetes you might have like high blood pressure and uh, it's not due to any other thing, but it, it can be due to aging. So even if you age, like if you are 50 or you're 60 and you have like, uh, you have been active throughout your life, you have been uh, doing uh, uh, a light exercise even, and you have been taking uh, uh, like a healthy diet throughout, and it, there might be uh, uh, nothing to you, even when you reach 60, there wouldn't be any diabetes, there wouldn't be any high blood pressure. So as uh, like uh, in the modern uh, era, we don't have to be too much dependent on the medicines. Even I'm a doctor and saying that, but there is a uh, condition like uh, you don't have to be uh, dependent on the medication for your well-being, but you should be precautious enough to uh, to don't make that happen, to don't bring that disease to you. Just to like to you can avoid uh, hypertension by staying like active by taking adequate food and uh, like uh, sorry. You could taking healthy food uh, and by daily uh, even light exercise, a cardio or walk. So uh, black population is also predisposed to high blood pressure. 
having certain medications including CKD, kidney, chronic kidney disease, metabolic syndrome, obstructive sleep apnea, or thyroid disease can also cause high blood pressure. So some of these are I have acquired from the uh, uh, stats acquired from uh, different papers that or the studies that have shown that this age uh, certain ages are like threshold when you cross it you might be susceptible and uh, uh, there was a study in which like the different populations were studied about uh, uh, their age versus the uh, blood pressure risk so the pop black population were more prone to the high blood pressure uh, thyroid if we speak of thyroid disease hyperthyroidism means overactive thyroid can also lead to high blood pressure having overweight or obesity it is a major cause of high pressure, blood pressure these days not getting enough exercise it is also one of the major causes eating foods high in sodium this is also a major cause because high sodium in the blood can accumulate more fluid in your blood and can uh, lead to overflow of the uh, fluid in your vessels that can lead to high blood pressure of course there are mechanisms in the detail but we, that are out of our scope so smoking or using tobacco products drinking too much so uh, these are all the risk factors for high blood pressure what are the complications that can happen uh, chronic artery disease it means if you have high blood pressure you might be damaging your uh, small blood vessels of your heart uh, or if you are having blood pressure due to obesity you, there might be like a deposition of the cholesterol stroke uh, uh, cholesterol uh, like plaques in your vessels that makes narrow and this way you can have ischemic heart disease uh, it means you or your heart is not receiving proper blood and you might suffer from hyper, uh, sorry uh, myocardial infarction which you commonly call heart attack there might be a complication of stroke in which you your blood vessels can bleed in your brain because they are very delicate peripheral artery disease uh, like you can have uh, all of your uh, um, blood vessels uh, can be damaged due to a uh, persistent or prolonged blood pressure uh, kidney disease and kidney failure it means your kidneys get damaged by a very sudden uh, exposure to high blood pressure this way your kidneys shut down complications during pregnancy as i already told uh, uh, women can also uh, suffer from secondary hypertension during pregnancy uh, eyes can be damaged due to hypertension as uh, 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 retina is a part of eye that help us see so retina gets damaged due to high, uh, hypertension this this way anyone can uh, suffer from eye damage uh, vascular dementia it means your brain is not getting uh, enough blood or enough supply from uh, vessels or any malfunction in the vasculature of your brain this way your brain is uh, starts uh, like atrophy and you might suffer from dementia so these were the complications as I told, uh, there are life signs you need to lower your blood pressure, which are like to maintain a, a normal or like a, 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 sorry ideal BMI body mass index, which is like uh, normal between 18.5 to 24.9. Uh, body mass index means your body weight uh, in correspondence to uh, to the your height. So underweight would be 18 uh, less than 18. And overweight would be 25 to 29, obese would be 30 to 34, extremely obese over 35. So these are the different ranges of the body mass body mass index, which is called BMI. We categorize the person as underweight, overweight, obese, or extremely obese on the basis of these stats. So uh, eating a healthy uh, diet can uh, get rid of hypertension as well, primary hypertension. So a diet can be full of fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and low fat dairy. These can help you to like lower down your blood pressure. Cut down your salt. It means reduce your uh, sodium intake. Uh, it should be uh, no more than 1500 milligrams, 15 mg per day. So if it is too difficult, if you are too addicted to the salty food, you must start by lowering it step by step. So get enough potassium. Uh, Try to consume 500 to 5,000 milligram per day. You don't have to remember these stats, but at least you should know that there are foods that can be uh, like uh, it can be useful when you are having hypertension. These include bananas, avocados, and potatoes with skin. So these are rich in uh, potassium. They, these can help you to lower down your blood pressure.
so this uh, is a standard diet that is shown uh, which is called for dash diet desh in which like a different uh, categories or the of the different foods are given like you have to do uh, six to eight servings per day of the whole grain four to five servings per day having vegetables four to five serving per day of the fruits two to three servings per day of the low uh, fat dairy two to three servings per day of fat and oils uh, less than five servings per week having sweets less than six servings per day lean meats poultry eggs and nuts seeds and legumes so this is a standard diet that should be followed uh, to avoid hypertension uh, you can have exercise daily you should do like at least like a uh, uh, like a uh, walking or you might do jogging so uh, even have uh, slight exercise like stationary bike or you uh, can uh, like use treadmill uh, or you can go for swimming so these are all the aerobic exercises that uh, can help you lower your blood pressure even uh, resistance training just like uh, weight lifting uh, if you're going to gym that would be also enough so alcohol should be alcohol intake should be limited so there are different medicines we will uh, just only have to look uh, at it there are angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors uh, this is a, one category of the, the uh, medicine that can lower your blood pressure there is angiotensin type 2 blood pressure block uh, receptor blocker arbs there are calcium channel blockers there are diuretics water or fluid pills we also call it so these diseases uh, these medicines are used commonly used to lower your blood pressure so uh, <clears throat> The most commonly used uh, blood for the blood pressure is calcium channel blocker and diuretics, which are these two are used to overly 50 years and plus. Diuretics makes you uh, urine more. It means uh, you are uh, like uh, getting rid of the water and the sodium from your body more and more. This way, your heart gets at ease a bit and your blood pressure gets down. Calcium channel blockers make like uh, calcium uh, prevents calcium to enter into the cells of the heart that makes the heart to contract a little bit slower or uh, like uh, and all, as well as the it can also lead to the uh, relaxation of the blood vessels which means the heart doesn't have to do that much work as it was doing before in the severe hypertension so that was all about the hypertension